Hey, how's it going? I just released a set of over a hundred custom brushes for Manga Studio 5, which I have available for purchase. Let me go through each set real quick. Included in the set are 14 inking brushes that I use, 12 pencil brushes, 18 paint brushes and blenders, 22 different texture brushes I've created, 5 shading brushes, 16 splatter effect brushes, and 20 plus special uh, pattern brushes that I created. Let me show you each of the brushes in use. Uh, let me show you some of my favorites so far. I've set up these, uh, these blood splatter brushes to basically follow the motion of your pen. So let's say we want like some nasty blood coming out of this guy's mouth. Just like painting with real blood. Um, and then I got, you can use these for the background. Most of these were made with, um, with scans of real, like, ink splatters. Alright, and then in addition to that, I've got a lot of these stippling brushes that I use um, for shading of all kinds. Um, really helpful when doing t-shirts when you can't exactly use gradients of color. Here's a cool toothbrush spatter. This one here, this Blood Splatter Dexter, is one of my favorites because it, it just really flows with uh, uh, the motion of the brush so you can really make some cool, cool shapes and textures really quick. There we go. I think that's nasty enough. Alright, this section is uh, all these special pattern brushes I've created. Um, they're pretty random. Uh, I hope some of them are useful, some of them are you know, pretty weird. Um, this is a, a realistic rope brush that I made from uh, a photo of a rope. It's totally seamless and, and you can bend and then actually go over itself, which is so cool. Uh, but we have like uh, bandolier bullets here I use sometimes. This one is really cool. Um, realistic barbed wire that moves as you move the brush. You can change the size of it just as you can with any other brush. Um, chains, good old chains. Got a cloud brush here. All right. Um, I have, oh, this works better like this. These smoke brushes, which I use, use a lot for effects sometimes. And another vapor brush here. It's also cool for fire. I have these pipes. This water brush is nice for painting, um, painting the ocean or something like that. What I'll do is usually overlay this on a soft light layer over top and it's totally seamless too. This water brush is cool. You can change the color. Included in the set are 22 texture brushes that I use all the time um, when I'm either painting backgrounds or just rendering things to try to give a little more organic feel to them. Um, also, some of these brushes I use in t-shirt design when uh, there's like a big flat color that I need to break up. Uh, so let me run through them here. It's all kinds. This is a really nice one, a dr uh, dry brush that I use a lot to add like really subtle texture to the background. I do this a lot with children's books with this one. This one's nice, it kind of flows with the, the movement of the pen. Yeah, this one I use. This one I use a ton. This grunge brush right here, just from a texture I scanned in. You can kind of see. This one here is nice uh, because it can blend. So you can take two colors, let's do like a red, and depending on the pressure, you can kind of blend in the texture like this. 
Very cool for doing sort of a pastel look. Okay. Uh, got, what is this one? Some cracks. Oh, this one's cool. Um, I use this a lot along the edge of things, and it, it moves with your brush. So what I'll do sometimes, if you have big flat shape, let's take like this. I'll take this brush um, and paint in transparency, and then you can just sort of rough up the edge. Oh, uh, this one was made, uh, this one was made from ice. Kind of a cool texture I use a lot. Here we go, more, more dots and speckles. This one is cool, it's a hard-edged shatter brush, which is really cool for breaking up large shapes, especially around the edges. And here's some splooches. And here's kind of a grungy edge that I use a lot as well. Um, this is a fabric texture I made. Might be hard to see in the video, but it's if you zoom in, it's got sort of a, a canvas texture to it. This is cool for filling in like clothing and stuff uh, for concept art. Some more mess. Uh, this one's a nice one I use a lot. Um, it's, it's a watercolor background texture. Really soft. And this one, another watercolor texture, scanned in from some watercolor paper. This is a really, I use this one a lot on children's books to kind of, you know, like in a sky maybe or on ground to give a little organic texture. And just, this one is nice too. Lots of dirt and scratches. More dirt and scratches. And here's some actual scratches. And okay, and this one, um, I use this a lot in cartooning um, to give, let me give an example here. I use a square shading brush a lot to, to give like a very uh, rough texture but sort of cartoonish look to some things and same with this tasty shading brush is one of my favorites I use this a lot basically just made up of a bunch of squiggles that's Woody Harrelson this is just a tech a scanned in texture of wood let me show you what the different uh, shading tools do on the same illustration here's a textured shading brush the long leaded uh, pencil can actually be tilted, so you can, um, by tilting the tablet, or I mean the pen on your tablet, you can get sort of a, a real nice long leaded look here. And then if the, your pen is straight up and down, it does a, a thin line. If it's tilted, it'll do a broad line like that. And it kind of has the the similar buildup of a shaded pencil. Uh, this marker shading um, I use a lot in concept sketches when I just need to quickly like block in shading and shadows. Sort of a cell shading way but not quite not so blocky so it looks good with, uh, with mixed with pencils. Okay, and uh, the wash shading is pretty similar. And rough tilt shading. Um, this is pretty similar to the long leaded pencil, but a little, little more, instead of pencil texture, a little more grungy texture. Um, I might do this like in a background. And just like the long leaded pencil, if the pencil is straight up and down, it's smaller than if it is like uh, tilted like that. Doing the background here. So you can see if it's straight up and down, it's like that. And if it's tilted, it's very big without having to change the size of the brush, which is nice. 
I've also got 18 paint brushes that I've created um, from different textures and with different effects. Um, and in addition to that, there are a few uh, effect and color brushes, um, brushes that I use to colorize things in black and white, and then other brushes that I use to add uh, highlights um, and like glow effects. Some of the brushes use Manga Studios like blending options, and then other brushes are more transparent in blending, um, like the way that Photoshop traditionally uh, digitally paints. There are 12 pencil brushes that I created uh, with different textures and kind of different feels to each one. Um, I, I wasn't crazy about the pencil tools that came with Manga Studio, and it took me a while to finally narrow down um, a set of pencils that felt like uh, felt like the way that I traditionally draw on paper. Um, I'm not sure if I'm even there yet, but this is the closest I've gotten, and uh, some of these work pretty well for me. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing the brushes, they're available at FlylandDesigns.com. Thanks.